What's up, YouTube? Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, kind of a shocking bit of news here. Um, in December of 2010, a comet Elenin was discovered. Uh, it was named after the discoverer, uh, Pro Professor Leonid Elenin, who is a Russian astronomer. Um, comet Elenin was discovered uh, pa this past December. Blah, blah, blah. The question is, is why hasn't the media said anything about it? They always have made a big fuzz in the past about found comets. It is, be is it because it's going to become a little bit too close for comfort and they don't want people freaking out? And I think this is probably the truth. Comet Elenin could hit Earth. Uh, this is a possibility because of the very unstable predictions of the comet. Um, preliminary predi predictions have the comet coming to within 42 million miles of Earth with a very favorable comet sun angle for observers in the northern hemisphere, uh, which is everyone in America and most of the modernized world. Um, this is likely to change somewhat as additional data will tweak as the orbit and uh, as it now stands, uh, we will see spectacular comet display in late October and early November 2011. When Comet Elenin was first discovered in 2010, it was calculated to pass 8.8 .8 AU or 8.8 .8 times the distance of the sun from us away, but now these calculations have once again changed. Today the orbit calculation is down to within 0.24 AU within a minimum low as low as 0.15. But these data are being recalculated and of course um, the real thing is is that this uh, comet Elenin is still outside of the Oort cloud. Uh, it still has to pass through the Oort cloud and um, I'm not sure if you know what the Oort cloud is. It's basically a big huge uh, circular field of debris, uh, asteroids, big chunks, um, and then there's your odd dwarf planet like Pluto and uh, Eris and uh, Sedona and some of the other uh, planets out there. So gravity from those larger bodies out in the Oort cloud could affect its trajectory. It could get closer than 0.15 AU. I sure as hell hope not because 0.15 AU is about as close as we want a comet this big ever coming to Earth. Um, obviously, if it hits Earth, we're seriously, we're seriously fucked. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't like you usually use uh, swear words in my um, my videos, but <laughs> we would seriously be screwed if this thing obviously hit us. Um, and I know I've already read a few posts of folks that are not real pleased with the fact that it's uh, first letters of uh, this uh, comet are E L E, which. If you uh, remember the movie Deep Impact from the late 90s, um, Ellie was this uh, supposed extinction level event, which uh, was, uh, you know, basically the acronym the government was using for, um, you know, a giant comet that hit Earth. But anyways, um, so this is the uh, Russian astronomer Leonid Elenin that discovered this. The thing that makes this very conspicuous to me is that what he discovered this comet on, okay? He discovered this comet on an 18-inch reflecting telescope. Now, I'm not sure if any of you guys are, um, you know, <laughs> backyard amateur astronomers. I personally have a 4-inch reflecting telescope. Um, the reason that this is conspicuous to me is because an 18, I, I know I know personal people that have 18 inch reflecting telescopes in their back shed. Okay. This is not a big instrument, not at all a big instrument to put things in perspective. Um, the optics in Hawaii on, uh, and the optics in some of the bigger observatories around the world are several feet in diameter, like 30 feet in diameter. Some of them are even bigger than that. I think the biggest one is, uh, Mount Kilauea in Hawaii, but I could be wrong. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head which one the biggest one, but the bottom line is is that an 18-inch reflecting telescope is not a big telescope. So the fact that this guy, this, this amateur, basically, you know, astronomer with an 18-inch telescope discovered this thing first, I find that very hard to believe. I personally believe that um, they must have known about this, and more than likely the reason they're not saying anything about it was 
that they're they're like, okay, well, we can't keep a hush on it anymore. This guy found out about it over in Russia, and now it's published. Now it's news. Uh, but they're still not making a big huff huff about it. So uh, the next thing I want to show you is uh, the government's website. This is uh, a Navy military website that has basically incorporated the believed trajectory of this uh, flight path of, of LNN or uh, C 2010 X1 and we're going to take a look at this and we're going to um, run this simulation and we're going to watch and one thing I want you to pay attention to is um, the distance between LNN and Earth okay right here it's 1.72 AU's but it's also outside of um, well I, I believe it's basically uh, at this point in time May of 2004 well, actually let's see where it is right now let's back it up let's go all the way back to where we are right now right now it's uh, right about it's right out here I mean it's it's January 26 27 28 so it's right here right now. So, um, and we are right here. So it's, I mean, it's way outside of the solar, the, the inner solar system right now, but it's gonna be making its way in. So let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, Earth's making our lap around the sun. And here comes Ellen, okay. Boom, right there. It's actually from what I, t I from what I was actually uh, reading somewhere, uh, it was coincidental that September 11th may actually be when it reaches periphelon or its closest point to the sun. According to this, though, as you'll notice, this is different than um, what some of the other tracking trajectories have. This thing coming in at within. 0.15 AUs. Okay, this government website, though, I think the closest it gets is 0.423. Yep, right there, 0.423. So, uh, according to this website, it's going to reach Perifalon late September, early in October, and it's going to be 0.423, which is still pretty close. Uh, we we still hardly ever. As a matter of fact, I don't know if we've ever seen in our lifetime, my lifetime, I'm 35 years old, I don't know if I've ever seen a comet within uh, half the distance to the sun. I'm, I'm not sure that I have. Um, and if I have, it probably wasn't a very big one. Um, this one could be pretty big. Um, I don't know that much other detail about it, although it is peculiar to me about how this is not being picked up in the mainstream press. Um, the the trajectory here on this government military site, which could be disinformation, I don't know, um, but this is not jiving and corresponding with some of the other reports. Of course, you know, like I said, it could change when it gets in from the Oort cloud, and um, you know, it could be affected by other gravitational bodies. Uh, so that being said, this is something that I think everybody should, you know, keep their eyes peeled for. Um, and the real interesting point is going to come. Um, if you notice right here, LNN is where we are going to be in late October. Okay, so um, here we are on October 14th, and LNN is sitting right on our path. So and I, I'm not sure if you know what a comet is made of, but it's basically a bunch of ice and rocks and dust and gases, and it leaves a trail in the space where it travels. Okay. Um, especially the closer it is to the sun because jets and geysers on the, the uh, comet itself will, will blow out more ice and, and gases and rocks and chunks and dust will be left more so as it passes through the inner part of the solar system because the sun's going to heat it up and uh, all those fissures and jets on that comet are going to explode and all kinds of stuff is going to fly off of it. Well, then Earth is going to be where... It was November 8th, November 7th, and November 8th. So uh, during this period of time, we are more than likely going to tremendously, we're going to have a, just a ton of meteors because we're going to be flying through a fresh path where a comet just passed through 
a few weeks before. And so there's going to be a bunch of just chunks and ice and rocks and dust. And, you know, by chunks and rocks and dust, it could be pretty big chunks being left in the path of this thing. You know, it all, all depends. But um, so get ready for some serious meteor shower viewing um, if we're still around on November 7th. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today. I wanted to share with you, uh, Elenin, and just kind of um, give you a heads up about it. If you're a prepper and you're preparing for the SHTF, um, don't stop now. <laughs> uh, take care. Laser Beam of Truth, signing out.